dun, 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 dun. Here we go. Electric Chad. Oh my God. All right, well, welcome to hurricane season officially. So you can see we have a few bands headed our way today. Um, so I'm not sure what we're gonna get accomplished in terms of filming. All right, everybody, so we just grabbed some lunch here um, and we are outside of Academy Sports. So I want to try to get my hands on a sample of the Gary Yamamoto Zacco swim bait. I, maybe it's pronounced Zacco. I've heard it. I've heard it said Zacco. Um, you know, a lot of people are familiar with this bait. It's like considered the ultimate chatterbait trailer. I recently picked up a mold <clears throat> that is basically just like that bait. It's not an exact copy. It's but you can tell that it's um, their version of the Zaco, right? Um, Zaco, sorry. So anyway, I just picked up that mold. It's a bass tackle mold. I'll show I'll show it to you here once we're back um, at, in the fish cave. But I'm gonna kind of run around and see if I can find <clears throat> an example of it in a particular color. I want to try to get Gary Yamamoto's electric shad. And if you remember uh, a few videos ago. I had the Lureworks Sparkle Flake, which is exactly what I need in order to make Yamamoto's Electric Shad. And now that I have a mold that looks like that bait, I have to try it. All right, welcome back to the fish cave. So Academy sucked, which um, wasn't, I guess, all that surprising, but we were able to find some of these <clears throat> at Bass Pro Shop. I did not find the color that I really wanted, the electric shad, but I did find this really awesome Tennessee shad. So let's take a look. I'm actually uh, really digging this. So you have that nice kind of brown pearl top and then just a see-through clear bottom, right? With some small silver flake. So while we are at it today, we are gonna match this one. Why can't it focus? There it is, right? We're definitely gonna match this one. However, we also wanna match Electric Shad. Let me get out a picture. There it is. So not really a brown pearl top, at least it doesn't look like. More, more of a brown pigment with lots of that uh, violet sparkle flake and then a clear bottom. So it's actually not <clears throat> too different from this, um, just with the uh, a, a little bit darker brown top, of course, uh, just per that picture. And then it looks like both the top and bottom colors both have the sparkle flake. See, what's interesting about the sparkle flake is in this picture, you kind of really only see it there in the center, but it could be everywhere else but you really only see that flake when the effect, uh, when, when it hits the light correctly. So, um, interesting stuff there. And real quick, before we get started, I wanna show y'all a few exciting things in the eyeball and hand pouring world. Um, so I wanted to show y'all a few recent, uh, some, some recent work. I've been very sick the past week, so um, I haven't done a whole lot. These are really cool. These sort of blueberry ginger ninjas. You can see it's blue. Right, but the body's a little bit darker. That's just a black capsule filled in with blue, and then the tails are filled in with a light blue. <clears throat> so when you look at them, it's the classic black and blue, but just a little bit different. And then here are some of the uh, signature eyes that I just launched with Jetson Lure Company. So these are some of the Chris Jones signature eyes. So we have the blue tarpons, we have a um, our um, rainbow trout pupil in the uh, chartreuse color. This is one of my favorites, golden plush. This is some of the uh, blended colors. That right there is the Seminole, Lake Seminole hybrid striper eye. Then we have some eight millimeters, some more of the uh, blended colors, some more trout pupils here, gold and violet trout, rainbow trout pupils, some of the uh, plush, and then some more tarpon eyes. So, you know, just, just a few different things. I recently did a pour, this one right here, and put them on those. Come on, focus. Yeah. Really cool there. Really cool effect. 
So yeah, we'll get, get a few of them out there. Really pretty poor there. So again, our weapon of choice is of course Dead on Plastics Plastisol. It's the best Plastisol I've ever used. It's a good phthalate free option. And uh, I highly recommend anyone getting into the hobby of salt plastics. Definitely check out Dead on Plastics. Tell them that I sent you and uh, we're gonna get it stirring up here. Get our resin nice and mixed up. And uh, we're gonna start with this Tennessee Shad color. And then we're gonna move on to the daddy of them all, the Electric Shad and see if we can get that one looking good. All right, so we have some plastic cooked up, and if we look at this, it's sort of like an Arkansas Shiner type brown top, and you can see there's like some gold pearl effect to it. See that? You can see it really well there. So the closest brown that I have to that is this MF Olive. So we're gonna start there, okay? And we might need to darken it with some black or I'm not sure, and then we're gonna add some gold pearl to it. Yeah, we're definitely gonna darken it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna start there, but then we're gonna darken it with like a drop of black, then add some um, gold pearl to it and see if we can get it looking close. All right, there's our drop of black. Let's get that mixed in, and that will change the whole thing. Look at that, beautiful. All right, much closer there. Now let's add a little bit of gold pearl. Just a smidge, just enough. Almost like it's gold highlight, which, you know what, crap. Maybe I should have used gold highlight. That might be what Yamamoto's using here is gold highlight instead of gold pearl. I might have just screwed up, but that's okay. First go at it here. This is our first go, and I have to say, I'm uh, I'm thinking that's that ain't bad. Look at that. Add a little bit more brown to it, and then one more drop of black. Because we don't want to get too much color in there. Yeah, that's looking about right. Okay, and then for the bottom side, just clear with small silver flake. Small silver flake. There we go. And they didn't add a whole ton of silver flake. We'll probably actually put a little bit more in ours because that's fun. I like lots of sparkle. All right, here's round one. Top side is gonna be on the left side, so the way that the mold is just kind of configured. And uh, we have our dual injector. Let's see what we can do. Look at this, so I uh, this is part of the injector plug that came out. Lord have mercy. If that ain't it, then I'm not gonna get it. All right, here we go. I'm confident in the color. I just hope that the mold injected right. I didn't preheat it, and it's a little thick of a cavity. So we'll see what happened. But here we go, drum roll please. Watch this color not look anything like it's supposed to look. Oh, okay. Look at this. Yes, very close. You can see some dents there. So I'm wondering if I need to hold more pressure. Well, you know what? Let's at least just get one out and look at the color. So you can see I did not get a very clean laminate, despite having temperatures pretty even. Um, okay, because I've, I've already laminated this mold when I first got it in, and it laminated like a champ. So if we look at the uh, Yamamoto, you can see their injection machine kicked my butt. Uh, in terms of getting an even laminate. 
I feel like my color would look really close if the laminate was any good. <laughs> That's a little bit better there. I actually need a little bit darker top, a little bit more saturation, and just a little bit darker on the top. All right, here comes round two, and uh, the temperatures are a little lower. These are both at about 320 degrees. Then we're going to inject a little slower, see if we can get a little bit better result, and we did darken up the top side. So hopefully this works a little bit better for you guys. Well, heck, and for me. Because I would really like to get this right. And I know that we can. We're so close. Not bad for, for a first try at it. But I know we can get it looking fresh. Oh, snap. Are y'all seeing what I'm seeing? I'm seeing non-dented more even laminates. Look at that. Oh, oh my gosh, folks. There it is. There it is. Look at that. Yes. Second try. We nailed it. Had to do some troubleshooting, but that is A-OK. -okay. Look at this. And I do have to remark how, uh, how well the mold shoots. You know, the tails always fill and uh, seems to do a good job there. Look at that. Still a little dentage up there. You know, and denting is actually a temperature thing. It's when the plastic cools too fast inside an injection mold. It actually has nothing to do with venting. I think a lot of times people think that when a mold dents, it's because the mold maker didn't know how to vent properly. Actually, it's a temperature thing. The denting problem is on you, not the mold. There it is, y'all. There it is. I am like so proud of myself right now because <laughs> that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Okay. What do y'all think? How did we do? Awesome. Awesome. I think we're going to call that one a winner. And now we're going to move on to the electric shad uh, and see if we can get that one looking good. Okay, so this one, the brown side is a little bit more brown. So we're going to add some normal brown. Just a little bit. Well, maybe. I thought we were. Ugh. Okay, well, you know what? Rain check on that. Okay, yeah, we got a few drops of the brown in there. Alright. Yeah, looking good. Also want to darken it up with some black so we're gonna go two drops of black and uh, again you know I don't have a sample of this one in in my hand so all I can do is really go on what I see in pictures and that's looking close let's pull up the picture again yeah so you can see that the you can see how dark the brown is right I mean that's a almost looks black on the shadowy parts. So we definitely are on the right track there. You know what, we're gonna use a little bit of this olive because I really like the olive. I don't even know if it's olive in there. Probably not, but I like the olive. Now, because we are using the sparkle flake, I have to be really, really sensitive to temperature. So I don't even wanna add the sparkle flake until I know that I'm ready to shoot. And we are about there. So that was 318 degrees on that side, which means this side's a little bit colder because it's been stirred more. So we're just gonna load it up. We're absolutely gonna load this up. And maybe this is a huge mistake. I really don't know. But I'm looking forward to seeing it. Oh my God, there it is. It's actually looking really good. It's looking mighty fine. Yeah. Does that not remind you of it right there? <clears throat> now let's uh, stir it into the clear side. So you're not going to see it as much on the clear side. The uh, not, not the effect anyhow. We're going to add even more to the top side. Because I think that's where you're going to see it the most. 
just the top side. So anyway, we're going to stop there and um, we'll probably give these a quick stir and then a very light reheat. And then it's time to run a few of these and see if this is even close. So I'll probably do the, uh, the little table drizzly test there. And uh, it's actually looking pretty good. So I think we're going to stop there. All right, we're going to try that. This plastic is so cold. I don't even know if I'm going to make it through all the runs, but here we go. All right, I think we made it. Okay, are we even close? Here we go. Join me in a drum roll. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. Electric Chad. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. This is my defining moment. I finally got it. Oh my God. Look at the effect that that flake has. Oh, I just, man, I wish y'all could see this in person. That is it. That is it. That is it. First freaking try. Yes. Look at that flake. There's just no substitute for it. It's... I liken it to the to the hyper shift powders. If you don't have them, there's just nothing else that's going to look like it. And I'm sure this brown is a little bit different, but I'm not complaining. Like this is really a sin that y'all can't really get the full effect here on camera. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I really hope that's coming through well enough for y'all to understand. How freaking cool this is. Golly. I've been waiting for this moment. Yes, we did it again. We got it to work for a second round. There are the other ones over there. So, yeah, I would call that a wild success. Heck yeah, everyone. <sighs> if I wasn't so tired, I would literally dance. That's how excited I am about this. You may not think I'm that excited, but I really actually am. That was sweet. That was freaking awesome. I cannot believe what I'm seeing here on these things. Ugh. Y'all wanna look at them again? Let's look at them again. We're gonna lay everything out, get a nice thumbnail, and then we're gonna look at these again. And then I'm gonna rig one up on a chatterbait just to kind of show you what it's supposed to look like in actual practice. All right, there's the spread right there. And um, this isn't really the, <clears throat> this is a regular green pumpkin chatterbait. So that color does not really match there. That's a shad color on a, on a brim color chatterbait. But uh, my chatterbait box with all my other colors is in the bass boat under the boat cover and um, since it's gonna rain later and it looks like the bottom's gonna drop I didn't want to rip the cover all the way off um, and then have to put it right back on so anyway that's basically um, just how you rig it you just Texas rig it on the hook and again you know because you're putting that on a jig you don't want the plastic to be so weak that it's just gonna tear up the the nose and the head of that bait so the actual Yamamoto's, this, this is just too soft of plastic, if you ask me. To me, it's, it's a bit of a ripoff what they're charging for that based on, uh, <laughs> based on the durometer of plastic. Um, yeah, that one looks better from that side. So anyway, how do y'all think we did? I think it is a sexy spread. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I, was super, uh, I was super excited about getting this mold. 
had my eye on it a long time just finally pulled the trigger because i knew that i can have some fun with it and a couple of my personal buddies wanted some uh chatterbait trailers and i said well i can get a mold that looks just like everybody's favorite chatterbait mold or uh, chatterbait trailer which is that bad boy right there i love how it just has such a fish such a fish profile so heck yeah which one was your favorite electric shad or the tennessee shad let me know in the comments below all right everybody that's gonna wrap this up um, i hope you all enjoyed today's video anytime we have new molds it's always exciting and whenever we try new colors in new molds that's just like as good as it gets so uh lots of new molds coming soon so I'm working closely with uh, my sponsor, Angling AI Molds, right now. We are working on two projects. Um, the only thing I can say is one's going to be injection, one's going to be hand pour, and they're both going to be incredible. So um, hopefully we can get those in the works soon. I know Josh and I have been talking back and forth, and we're both super excited. Uh, so be on the lookout for some amazing things coming from Angling AI Molds. But um, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed today, today's video with the mold that we were using today. I don't remember the name of that mold because Bass Tackle just kind of numbers them. Um, so I don't, I don't really even think that it has a name. But in any event, awesome mold. Had a good time uh, running it and uh, definitely going to be making a lot more of those. Uh, please like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads or live streams. And uh, we will see you in the next one.